When I first started teaching online, my boss said to me, you'll have online office hours in the evenings. I said, okay, online office hours, how does that work? This was quite some time ago. So she showed me GoToMeeting. I think we had one login for our whole university and we'd use it from time to time and stagger our office hours. And I would be lucky if two students would show up. If I give a challenging enough problem, maybe two students would come to see me at the agreed upon time that we discussed on the discussion board. And that got old pretty quickly. So I wanna share with you what I have kind of optimized as my plan for office hours. And I'll just dive into that. And I'm gonna show you this on Blackboard Collaborate, but every meeting software, I know Zoom is really popular right now. Every meeting software is going to have these features available. So you'll be able to do all the things I showed you. You may just need to Google for your particular learning management system or meeting software, but I'll get you going with just some ideas to have a really successful and interactive session with your students. So in Blackboard, I'm going to navigate to Course Tools, open Blackboard Collaborate Ultra, and when I get there, it looks like this. Um, you'll have to search for all this functionality and how to use it in your learning management system. The built-in conferencing for Canvas is called Conference. <laughs> and then if you have a Zoom meeting, you're going to have all of these tools. You'll just need to get used to where to find everything. So if I click on this tab over here, this is some controls, and this tab expands the chat. So there'll always be a chat. And the way I've set up my sessions, the students actually chat to me and I speak into the microphone. For larger groups, this is just much easier. The questions can come in and I can finish what I'm saying and keep track of it. There's not a lot of people talking over each other. Now, if the student needs to speak because it's just a complicated question, they'll just type in the chat that they want to speak. So let me just put something in the chat so you can see how that works. And so when I'm starting and setting up, my by default, my audio and video are off. Um, it's usually that way with many of the softwares. You start with everything turned off, um, but just make sure you know how to navigate that. As the moderator, you can also mute other people's microphones. So if somebody's in there and you hear them like cooking dinner while they're trying to attend your office hours, you can go ahead and just turn that off uh, for that user. So the students will tell me if they need to speak, but they're really comfortable just chatting um, with me. And so there are some settings that I can control here to, to set up things properly. All of my attendees will show up here. I us usually keep this on the chat, except for when I wanna start sharing my content. And so when I share that, I usually share my whole screen. Um, there is a way to share an application, but um, I'm trying to teach my students how to use ChemDraw at the same time, and they say you can't see some of the menu items. So I just usually share the whole screen. And so now it says it's sharing, and I can hide this panel. It makes this crazy thing, like when you have two mirrors next to each other, really wild. But it lets me show my desktop, and I can pull up what I want to, which is a ChemDraw file with a little lesson and practice problems. So this is the way I've gotten them engaged. I said, come to office hours. You don't need to do anything. You may need to be honest with me about how much reading you've done so I know how much I need to cover as background, but you don't need to prepare anything. Just come ready to learn and you might need to answer some questions for me. And so they'll answer the questions in the chat. And so here is something I just set up ahead of time. This is an office hours I did a few weeks ago. Actually, it's kind of a mishmash. I'll show you a few things. This is all medicinal chemistry. So I wanted to show them how a ligand might interact with a receptor. I wanted to go over these definitions. I didn't trust that they had done their all their reading, and I was correct. And so we needed some of these definitions to get going. And here's kind of what the finished product looked like. I was trying to show them how there'd be a conformational change. We talked about each of these um, definitions. I paused to give them time to think about it and type back to me. Some of them, you know, are slow typers. So it feels like you're waiting forever, but give them that time. And it actually will say something down here like so-and-so is typing. And so you can kind of wait and just give them think time. It's absolutely fine if there's silence for a while. Uh, you could even cut it out of your video later if you wanted to. Um, but then 
I'll go into something. Here's just one of the book problems. And so um, this isn't receptors. This was just another problem that I was doing with enzyme mechanism. So this was inhibition. And this is a screenshot from their textbook that I have the electronic version of. I put it in there, went over all the steps of the mechanism. And this was the question. These are both mechanism-based inhibitors. Explain why. So I left them with this on the screen. Sometimes you got to make it a little smaller. And so they could ponder it. They could take notes on paper. I think I gave them about seven minutes of thinking time for this problem. And then we went over each of these. And... Um, you know, I'll type in some things. I'll show them what step of the mechanism in ChemDraw. I'll use my, my arrows and things like that to show them, you know, how things are inhibited and, and whatnot. So I can draw and mark this up and make notes for them, which I usually do in blue uh, for this answer key. And then I can send this out to the class if I want to. So here's an original problem. And yeah, these are all from different weeks. <laughs> But um, the, this blue was added in the session. So um, the students were having a little bit of trouble getting going, and we we're going to look at what these different functional groups, the kinds of interactions that they might have, and how you might change the molecule, alter the molecule, to see if you, uh, to probe for different interactions, let's say. And so we got to this point, I was like, not really much going on. And I said, okay, let's identify some of the functional groups we might test. So we got this A, B, and C in here. I said, okay, there might be others. So I'm just going to put a little D to the side for now that you, and you can think about this as you go. And this was actually a beautiful example because my students were all typing to each other in the chat. When I gave them the work time, I was just watching them collaborate in real time. Sometimes they're quiet and um, they, you know, they're working it out on paper or maybe they're totally lost waiting for seven minutes to go by, but it does give them time to grapple with it and try to write down something. But this class was just really interactive and they're typing back and forth and it was really great to see. And so eventually I'll put in some of their suggestions. Um, I'll ask them, okay, how did you want to alter A? And they'll tell me what they did. Take out the methoxy. Okay, what are you doing then? And so we can get into some of those key pieces. Now I record this and all their typing would be here. And there is a way to record through the system and, and all softwares have a way to record your meeting. But I'm using a secondary program, ScreenFlow, to record this because what I found is I'll actually cut this part of the screen out because the students, they'll be more likely to offer up responses because they know I'm going to cut it out. I'm not going to show everybody what their wrong answer is so they can feel free to propose wild ideas or just try it and say something because they know that I'll cut it out. Now, if you do that, Every question that's asked, you have to very deliberately read it aloud and then answer it. Um, but I like to do this because then if I want to reuse um, a video or maybe I just explained something better than I've ever explained it in my life, I can chop that part of the video and give it to another class, use it for years to come as a mini lesson because this was the best time I've ever recorded me going through a problem like this. So one thing I want to share with you is how to create a live stream on YouTube. Now, I know at my current university, they've been saying, ooh, don't use Blackboard Collaborate for lectures. Like, it just takes too much bandwidth. It's supposed to be used kind of infrequently for office hours. But a YouTube live stream is a great way to record a live session. The students, they'll only be able to type to you through a chat, but... I mean, if that's all the functionality you need and you really just want to record yourself doing something but have them there and then have it available um, for other students, you can start a live stream. So let's create a live stream. So we'll go live. And we'll just call this test. And we're going to set this to be unlisted. So anybody with the link can view it. Click next. Oops, and you can see my microphone. So we'll get a thumbnail. And so that might just be you uh, there. And so now you can go live and you can share it using this link.
So we'll go live and now you can see how we can um, interact. Like I just have a whiteboard behind me. So if you have a whiteboard at home and you want to draw things out, you could go ahead and make sure you Make sure you draw them large enough so that people can see and maybe with a better marker and less glare. But you get the point of what you can do with this. And uh, you have a chat over here so people could be asking you questions as you go. You could write for a minute then check your questions and um, respond to them. So that makes this really nice. And uh, if you're already in it, you can also um, get your share down here again. And I'm just going to go ahead and end this stream for now. Well, I hope this video gave you some inspiration for ways that you might interact in a synchronous way with your student and uh, maybe some ideas to make your office hours nice and engaging. Thanks again for joining me.